Can you get banned from gyms? Yes. So, uh, so actually, the, the thing with doping testing in the gyms uh, now, if you're so they actually test in the gyms. Yes. So they have actually when you when you drive when you have a gym in Denmark, it's mandatory to report whether or not you're part of the testing agreement or not. And you have to d display this by having a big red uh, happy smiley or a sour smiley on the front door of the gym. You're obliged to have that by, uh, I think it's, you get punished by fine if you don't have that. We're on our way to Target Gym in Copenhagen, which is a non-smiley gym, because I wouldn't train in a smiley gym. Uh, at the end of the day, I might be away filming, but I've still got a train. As you see, this is the, the heavyweights room. That's cool. Yeah, it's a good one. And the prowler, yeah. <laughs> the killer. And this is, yeah, you can throw stuff around. This is all the other good stuff. Of course, we have the non-smiley face. We don't cooperate with anti-doping Denmark because, well, then we should be after everybody. There's a lot of other stuff that's not legal, so it must be up to the up to people themselves. So if, if that was a smiley face, yeah, then we'd what, be, what would that mean? That, that would mean that uh, they were allowed to come here and test you. And if you get tested, you get thrown out. And even like you have, we have the fitness world, the, the branch chain of uh, gyms. And if you get thrown out from one fitness world, you you can't come in any fitness world at all. That's, that's the deal. If you're part of the this deal that with, with uh, the Anti-Doping Denmark. Then Anti-Doping Denmark, two or three times, maybe four times a year, will send out their testing assistants and they will come unannounced and they will uh, pick out uh, the ones they think are most likely to be users. And you have to submit to testing? O otherwise, it's uh, considered a positive test. Going so is it written into the membership contracts at the gym that you have to abide by an anti-doping rule? Yes. A lot of the supplements that we allow in the EU is not allowed in Denmark. Uh, for instance, you know, the BCAAs, uh, you, you can get them in Denmark, but they have to have a certain amount before they actually work, and that's not allowed in Denmark. The Danish uh, legislation is extremely, uh, what do you call it, conservative. I'm not even, even uh, allowed to make a shake where I put protein powder and creatine and shake it and sell it. But I can sell creatine in a bucket and uh, protein in a bucket. But I'm not allowed to make... The authorities have been after me because on that... Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And they told me, you're not allowed to put the creatine in with the proteins. But on the other hand, you can go to the corner shop and you can buy medicine, cigarettes and alcohol if you're 16. That's ridiculous. What would happen if you were caught selling a drink where you put creatine and protein in and sold it? I would have a massive fine, you know, several thousand kroners. And then if you, are, if you turn out positive, what's going to happen is that your name is going to be cross-indexed uh, in going into a register of doping offenders and then you are not allowed to attend uh, any kind of organized sports or gyms. My God. No. No. You can just take your car and drive half an hour from here to Sweden. You can just cross the bridge, you can get everything more or less. Their legislation is much uh, what you call loser. You know, I don't do anything. I never, I never touch anything myself. But whatever people want to do, as long as they don't harm anybody else and they can behave, they're more than welcome here too. You know, I like to. It motivates me to see people lift heavy and give it an extra go. Yeah, that's just that uh, sad smile is just good, good advertisement for us. In Denmark, as part of Danish culture, we have this thing called Jante Law, Law of Jante, uh, which is about, uh, so it pretty much states that you should not believe you're good at anything, you should not believe you're better than the next guy. Uh, and that is something, for some weird reason, that is inherent to Danish uh, public self-sense. And, 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 and in continuation of that sense of identity, it's very easy to not like steroids, because that's an egoistic one. And the, the, the whole the, the identity that's associated with having a big muscular body is easily frowned upon in Denmark. So, the gyms that don't sign up to this agreement, yeah. I presume they're quite well known and quite notorious for the fact yes. that they don't sign up to this agreement. So ultimately, 
what, it, what, it, what this thing, this testing agreement does, is that it pushes the users together in some uh, environments where some very heavy users. We're in the north of Denmark, I believe, which um, apparently enforcement is a little bit laxer here. Uh, and this gym is renowned for being full of gear. It's <laughs> And we've definitely got one guy confirmed to let us interview him about his usage and, and the laws and how it's affected him. I did speak to a guy who sells this morning, but he refused to go on camera, unfortunately. And when I asked him why, he said uh, that since January, when they've tightened up again with the law, 13 of his friends have been sent to prison, all for dealing. So he says, it's, it's, you know, if this film's going to be released to the public, he says, no chance, <laughs> it's just not worth it. Did you say you've got a high percentage of users membership-wise here? How many uh, yeah, do we use it? Uh, maybe half or something. About 50%? Yeah, I think. And I how think many members do you have? Uh, 200. It's a decent quantity, yeah. then, yeah. Because we have a lot of um, competition yeah. down here. They compete. Some uh, guy asked me why, and he thought that it would be a nice thing if it and the doping come down here. And I told him uh, I didn't want that. And if they want it, they have to pay more in the memberships because it's very expensive. To, I think it's around 17,000 or something a year to, to have the smiley face. Oh, so you have, have to pay. pay. Yeah, you have to pay to be a member there. So, and I don't that uh, people have to do what they want. It seems a bit for a, for a, a situation that's supposed to be safeguarding. Their opinion is they're safeguarding the yeah. public. It seems ridiculous that you're actually charged for it as well. Yeah. But they do that. Because you have no supportive services for steroid users in this country, do you? No. You don't have any sort of needle exchange programs or anything like no, that at all? No, no. Not that I'm aware of. So no, I've I never heard. So that sort of stuff's all bought online, anything like that? Yeah. So how long have you been using? It's fairly new for me. It's uh, only been like a year now. Yeah? Uh, so, so I'm still a youngster around the, anything about you. Were you put off by the laws about starting to use? Mm, nah. To be honest, my amount, what I'm using is so small that I'm not afraid to... But it's still illegal. Yeah, it is illegal, but sometimes you have to take a risk in life. Was it easy to get hold of? Yeah. So it's quite... It's really, really easy these days, especially yeah. in, a, in a gym like this, because... Yeah, she said she had about 100 users in here. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we, have, we had a lot of teams down here. Yeah. And you know, people on the teams always use it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just to ask a coach. So do you get a lot of people here that play different sports that are using? No, only for the fitness. Just for the bodybuilding yeah. and fitness? Yeah, fitness and, and CrossFit athletes come mm. here. Uh, do you know anybody that's suffered for using? No, uh, me once. You've been prosecuted they, once? They, they kicked me out of uh, one of the gyms in the city because I didn't want to give them a doping test. Uh, right, uh, yeah, because no test is classed as a positive yeah, test, isn't yeah. it? So is that you now banned from all the gyms that have, have the smiley face thing? Yeah, but there is another problem here. If you go to the doctor and you ask for a test of your body or whatever, they don't do that. Oh, it's your problem. We cannot do that for you. So there's no medical support at all? Yeah, and uh, the guys that are taking these big doses here, they cannot go test themselves and they don't know how much damage, damage they, they get. Yeah, yeah. They've got so no way they continue on two, three, four, they get a five gram like you, but they're juniors, you know, they look yeah. like sticks and they get five grams. That's fucked up. This is my word. From this door to there to the end, that's it. I don't care what is outside. This is my achievement this is for me. So Someday I'll open my own gym and I'll just put all the cups on the wall. And I take it your gym won't have a smiley face. <laughs> it, it won't be in Denmark, forget about it. <laughs> like walking through a crowd. He's an animal. That's the only way you can describe him. And not a particularly pleasant animal when he's training. They all know who he is and they all avoid him like the plague. Bigger X here are what we sometimes call muscle dysmorphia. Tends to be focused on people who think of themselves as being not masculine enough. For some people it's, well either I get bigger or I'll end up killing myself.
was meant to be an experiment to see how far you could push yourself, not kill yourself. 